So welcome along. Hi, Matt Keenan. How are you? I'm very well, and Australians just won the Tour de France. You must be so stoked. It is. What a unique moment. And he's the first guy, not just from Australia, to win the race, but from the Southern Hemisphere. I think it's going to take a while, maybe, for Australia actually to catch up to it and realise just what has been achieved. Do you think Australians have, have got the... Um, I mean, Australia is a sport and a, it's an oval ball nation, a bit like New Zealand, but have they got yeah. the capacity to really understand as a nation what's happened, what's just happened? I, probably not until we get to next year and he comes in as the defending champion. It's maybe a little bit like the America's Cup, when Australia yeah. became the first nation outside of the States okay. to actually win that. And we had our Prime Minister at the time, Bob Hawke, who was famous for winning the sculling competition at Cambridge actually go on national television with a really bad jacket that had Made in Australia written all over it and said any worker that gives his boss, that gives, any boss that gives his worker the sack for being late into work today is a bum. So how did you start as a commentator? Uh, I was an average club that enjoyed riding his bike, raced in Europe for a couple of seasons, rode things like the Herald Sun Tour, that type of stuff, um, you know, top tens in Australian road championships, but my ambition far outweighed my ability came to the realisation at 23 that I was nowhere near good enough. So I went back to university, did a, a marketing journalism degree and wanted to stay involved in the sport. And I didn't want to be a commissaire and I didn't think I had the, comp the credentials to be a coach. And then there was an ad for someone to be a co-commentator down at the local velodrome and I applied for it. And I applied for a job that wasn't, weren't being paid for, by the way, and had to do an interview in front of a panel of about eight people and the other guy that went in before me was a former Australian champion. He rode the Olympics, Robert Crowe. And I walked in and I said, we've just had Robert Crowe come in. He's a much better bike rider than you ever were. What can you add that he possibly can't? I said, fair enough. He was a better bike rider than me. There's no argument in that. Who was a better bike rider? Phil Anderson or Paul Sherwin? Ah, stupid question, Matthew. Of course it was Phil Anderson, the greatest Australian cyclist of all time at that point, until now, of course. I said, yeah, I agree. Phil Anderson was much better. So who's a better commentator, Phil Anderson or Paul Sherwin? Good point. So they gave, they gave us both a go. And then it grew from there. I had ambitions of just commentating at the Herald Sun Tour and maybe the Tour Down Under, and that was it. Got lucky enough to work alongside Phil Liggett because he comes out to Australia a fair bit. And then he wasn't available to do the Tour of Qatar in 2007, so he recommended me, and that was my link into ASO. Great. And then... It grew from there. I had ambitions of just commentating at the Herald Sun Tour and maybe the Tour Down Under, and that was it. Got lucky enough to work alongside Phil Liggett because he comes out to Australia a fair bit. And then he wasn't available to do the Tour of Qatar in 2007, oh. so he recommended me, and that was my link into ASO. My commentary that you guys hear in New Zealand for the various races I do is part of the world feed from ASO, and it goes to uh, Africa as well, comes into Australia and other parts of the world. So for them, I do the Tour of Qatar, the Tour of Oman, both at the start of the year, then Paris-Nice, Criterion of Dauphiné, I do the Tour de France, and now I do the Tour of Spain as well. Beach working for a living. I've had a real job, this isn't it. To pay the bills, sitting in front of a TV monitor and talking about bike races is really winning the lottery. It's amazing. Oh, I pinch myself to think that I'm still doing it, that I'm actually at the Tour de France. Listening to your commentary, it just seems like you've got an encyclopedic knowledge and all these facts are just so at your fingertips. It's, it's, it's really amazing. How, does, how, does, how do you do that? When you're really passionate about something, you can watch it once and remember it. And that's the case with me in, in cycling. You must just have a great memory. Uh, I think the, the key is that I'm in the shadow of Phil Liggett and Paul Sherwin and they're the benchmark. So I've got to work pretty hard to get anywhere near those guys and particularly given you know, at the Tour de France, I'm in the booth on my own, I'm doing the part that's really boring, it's normally this part just after a breakaway is established and there's 120 k's to go, it's four minutes, there's six guys away, fair chance they're going to get caught. So you've got to, you've got to find something else to talk about. So I do, I, I do do lots of research. Why is it that they need someone to talk before and after Phil and Paul? The way it works in terms of when I actually stop commentating is once, once they go live on the TV in the US. So there'll be stages where they don't want to take the coverage until there's 50 k's to go. Right. So you'll have to put up with a lot of me. Right. There'll be stages where they want to take it from the very start where you'll get five minutes of me. 
And yeah. who puts together the half hour of highlights that you that you um, often do the voiceovers for? Well, the guys that I've got in this this little truck here with me, this portable truck, there's two French guys that edit it all together as the race is happening, and that's got to get on a satellite at 7.30 after each stage. The stage normally finishes at 6. Can you show us what the room looks like? Yeah. It's pretty rudimentary. It's a truck. So in here... All these decks here is where the guys actually edit it together. Cheers. That's one of the cameramen. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Jean Fi Martin. So all the stories that you Hello. see that are about like um, the Gruppetto or something historical, this is the guy that puts them together. Bye. And these guys over here are the guys that do the Latour website. This is Louis. Hello. He's the French guy. And Rob Arnold. He's the guy that does Ride Magazine, which I'm sure you've read. Are you in Australia? New Zealand. All right. Yeah. Choice, bro. Choice, bro. Right. He's, he's part. Beach does. These are the French guys that actually do all the work that you see. This is Olivier. He edits the highlights as it goes, listening to Phil and Paul. Hello. He's the boss. Hello. And he reminds us all the time. Uh, so there it is. Like, it's small, man. And in here, you also have, they've left, but... You've got the Chinese TV and you've got the Keep TV as well. And what are Phil and Paul like? Everybody wants to know, what are Phil and Paul like? Uh, I would not be doing this job without those guys. They've been really supportive of me, which in return makes me you know, really respectful of, of them. And I, I know my place, which is you know, the domestic in commentary terms, going back to get the water bottles. They, you get the feeling that they might be in real life a little bit like kind of an Ernie and Bert couple that um, sleep in single beds next to each other with little hats on and eat together and... Not a bit like. No? Exactly. A lot like. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> they're like two brothers. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. And off air, they're a lot funnier than what they are on air. Paul Sherwin is hilarious. In addition to commentating, he runs a 140-acre gold mine. He's got a logistics business that he runs as well in Africa and a transport business in Africa. I asked him the other day, couldn't fit anything else on your plate? It must be pretty exciting for, for you now to be an Australian in Paris. You've got, you've got the tour champion. What kind, what kind of guy is Cadell? Uh, he's unique, is one way to describe him. He's prepared to stand his own ground, and that's what's made him the success that, he's, that he has been. Because you look at coming into this tour, objectively, which is hard to do as an Australian, he'd been second in 07, then second in 08, followed by... 30th and 26th, and now 34 years of age. And no one post the Second World War has won the tour at 34 years of age. So the odds were against him, which probably tells you a fair bit about how determined he is as a human being. What's been the most exciting moment that you've actually called in your commentary career? 2009 World Championships, because I actually got to call the whole race. It was myself and Phil Liggett that called the whole race live into Australia. And to call an Australian across the line to win the world title, the elite road world title for the first time, was my highlight as a commentator. I would have loved to have had the chance to call the key moments of this year's Tour de France, but still doing my apprenticeship and, and hopefully my time will come in the future. How close do you get to, get to be to the blood, sweat and tears of the Tour de France when you're commentating? We're right on the finish line. The little silver boxes that you see there are right on the finish line and we often share the same hotel with the riders. So you can see how drained they are at the dinner table at night or at the breakfast table. Um, and when they go up the mountains and they go across the line and it's one last pedal stroke to get across the line, you've seen them racing for six hours, uh, it hits home. What do you think about Kiwi cyclists as a, as a breed overseas? The Australians and the Kiwis have got a, a lot in common. And I get to see a lot of the young, Aussie, uh, young New Zealanders come to Australia and race the track. And one of the guys I really like is Tom Scully. He knows how to race. And so is Shane Archibald. That guy, he is one determined guy and loves beating the Aussies. There was, there was a win by Tom Scully in the Jaco Bay Crits, which is a series that's been won by Robbie McEwen six times. He was in a break with Johnny Walker, who last year rode the Tour of Spain, and he's got brilliant bike handling skills, and Jack Bobridge, who's the current world champion in the individual pursuit, the second fastest guy of all time. Well... You know, I thought Tom Scully's going to finish third and it's going to be a race between the other two. We went around the last corner. He came through it about three lengths clear and by the time he got to the finish line, he was six lengths clear. Went over to the Kiwi coach and 
asked whether I could get some shares early because I think he, he's on his he's going to have a successful career on the road. And I like what you're doing with your pure black racing team as well, giving that stepping stone into the into the US. Which when you look at the career of Julian Dean and Greg Henderson, yeah, that's the way they went about it. They went to the US first. They earned their stripes there. They then got their opportunity in Europe. And they're now in their respective roles, two of the most valuable guys on their team. Julian Dean, you cannot get a better lead-out man in the world except maybe Mark Renshaw. But Mark Renshaw's got probably four stronger guys that do the work before him. Julian does a lot of stuff on his own and he's not the kind of guy I'd argue with. Matt, what kind of bike do you ride? A giant because it was given to me. I didn't have to pay for it. They're the best ones, aren't they? And, and you get a bit of other free stuff as a commentator? Cannot remember the last time I paid for bike equipment, and I hope I never have to pay for it again. Yeah. So it looks like uh, everyone's I packing up around you. Yeah, I need to go and do the voiceover for the highlights package. Oh, great. Well, good, good luck with that. We'll be watching that highlights package later on today in New Zealand. And thanks very much for talking to us, Matt. It's been really great. My pleasure. We love your commentary, so keep it up, and hopefully we'll get you down here in New Zealand sometime. Invite me and I'll come. Okay, great. It's a deal. Thanks, Matt. <laughs>